Hey everybody, this is uh, Patrick with Quite Incredible Books. Um, it's been about three weeks, I think, since we posted a video. So I know you all have been waiting. Um, so here we are. We've returned. Minus one. Katie is not going to be here for this video. This is a solo book review of The Sleepwalkers, How Europe Went to War in 1914 by Christopher Clark. Um, yeah, one of the reasons we haven't made any videos is because this book is massive. It took me just over three weeks to read. Um... So I guess to, to get to the short of it, was it worth it? Yeah, I think overall it, 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 it was worth the book. This, it covered the period about 1905 to the end of July 1914. So this is um, you know, the, just about the 10 years leading up to World War I, um, but does not cover the war. If you're looking for a war book, um, this is not it. Um, there is no fighting, there are no battles, really. Unless you, um, so this is, yeah, just leading up to the war. And what this book does is it, it's interesting. It, it, it is a more of a, um, it's trying to, and he explains in the introduction that he's trying to explain how the war happened and what happened. But um, he, he's decidedly attempting to not blame anyone. He's, he's taken the view that, um, um, in a rather interesting view, like traditionally we think of like, um, you know, states as like independent actors that have, you know, their own ambitions and their own motivations, which is true in a sense. But states are made up of individuals, is kind of what he's saying, um, that can have conflicting interests. So it's hard to just say Germany was threatened by, you know, um, Russia's, you know, being militarized by, the, you know, the French loans allowing Russia to build their uh, army up. And then Germany is taking, because Germany was more than one person. Uh, Germany, there were people in Germany that had different views. Same thing with um, England and France and Russia, where you have people who were more belligerent and less belligerent. And then they had, they had, um... More philosoph moral philosophical reasons for doing so, um, political reasons for uh, for doing that. So there was a lot of conflict. So it's it's, it's hard to assign blame to a country, um, and it's hard to assign blame to an individual as well. So he just wants to kind of explain how, who was where and when and why in July 1914 that led to um, essentially a failure of diplomacy. And overall, I think he does a good job. Um, but it does, at the same time, to do that, you have to get into a lot of individuals. Um, and I imagine a lot of the people, the major players in this book, are people that you've not heard about, unless you are, you know, a historian of the time period. So there's there's a lot of names, there's a lot of, I think, learning to do. I mean, I'm not a historian. I wouldn't even call myself um, a history buff. Uh, that, so that being said, there was a lot of there was a lot of information here that was uh, that had to, to be unpacked. Um, pros about the book: it starts off um, covering. Serbia in particular and the Balkans um, more broadly leading up to um, the war. And um, that's normally when you hear about World War One. you have a, it's saying Europe was a mess and then there was a smaller mess, um, but even more complicated in the Balkans. And I think after reading this book, I would say that's a generally true assessment. Um, and I feel I have a better understanding of what was going on in the Balkans at the time. But I also think it's equally easy to say it was a mess. So this was... Um, I don't think um, it changed my view really because the um, what I think this the situation in Europe at the time describes a mess and it looked like a mess. Um, so yeah, but um, again, I learned a lot about the, um, like how the Balkans kind of came to, came to be. You know, we have the receding of the Ottomans, um, Austria-Hungary, and Russia are now kind of you know in conflict over uh, different different areas, and it's complicated. It was interesting, and it was, it was things I had never heard of before. Um, we then go into a more, in the, the second part of the book, the, um, book, we go into a more general overview of um, the European kind of how things were laid out leading up to the war. And, the, and this is more familiar territory if you've, if you've, you know, at all familiar with the period. Um, but again, we get a lot more of the individuals kind of take. Um, it was good. Um, I liked it. We, we got to see a lot of uh, um, crises that did not lead to war. So we have we have a long, you know, Things that could have caused war but didn't, and, and why they didn't, and then we go into the, um, the third part of the book, which is just July of twenty four, July twenty four, uh, not twenty fourteen, nineteen fourteen. Um, and that is the book I thought was um, the least revelatory. I think we, I expected more of an explanation of, or so we've seen these previous crises, and this is why they were successful. Then we, we, then this is the one crisis where we've seen it, we saw it all fall apart, and I don't feel like I understood. What was so different about this one as opposed to other, you know, what made this crisis, you know, why did, why did we fail here when we succeeded? I mean, a lot of these were um, 
near misses, but it, so success is relative. But yeah, and I, I so I, I'm I'm left still curious about it, which I guess you know nothing is going to give you all the answers, especially in a book that is so limited and it's it's not trying to assign blame. So how else would you would you finish it? So I, and I and I get that. But overall, I would say this is probably, if you've never read about the period, um, this is not the place to start. This is a little too detailed, um, a little too in the weeds with names and policies. But if you're a little familiar, it's me, um, but not a lot familiar, this was um, really informative. And my understanding of the period, I think, is profoundly I, I, uh, grown. I, I know a lot, it was specifically in the Balkans, which one of, you know this book does really well. But in general, um, the, the state of European affairs leading up to World War One. Yeah, it was a good book. Check it out. Um, if you're not familiar with the period, I would still go with Barbara Tuckman, um, The Guns of August. That was uh, probably a better introduction. Um, but this, uh, if you want, if you read that book and you want more detail, check it out. The Sleepwalkers by Christopher Carson. Is that his name? I don't know. Christopher Clark. Um, yeah, good book.